because they took a beautiful system of people getting rewarded by other people for the hard work they did and made those workers supplement their own income with the rewards that they received and told us that it couldn't be any other way or the system would fail. Yeah. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are going to be checking out another one of the uh, what's clearly a scam, but Americans have been conditioned to believe it's normal. Part seven. This is the seventh part to this. And uh, I enjoy them. I really do. Of course, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't keep doing them, obviously, if I didn't enjoy them. And you guys clearly like them too. You wouldn't watch them, right? So anyways, we're going to check it out. Links down below. Original channel is called TikTok Reacts. While you're while you're down there you can go ahead and hit that like button let's check it out what's something that's clearly a scam but americans have been conditioned to believe is normal so me and my fiance he's belgian we live in belgium but we visited my family in the u.s and he asked me why do they always show commercials with prescription medication on them shouldn't your doctor tell you what you need and i was shocked i i just was like i i don't no. No, it's true that 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 that's how it is. There's there's ads for prescriptions all the time, and it's like ask your doctor if such and such is right for you. The doctor should just know, right? That that should be their job to ask to tell you what you should need, right? Then the other night we're over at his friend's house, and they ask me, "Is it true that every day in school you guys stand up and say the pledge of allegiance?" And I'm like, yeah, of course, why? Yeah. And they're like, do you still know it? I instinctively put my right hand over my heart and began <laughs> to fully recite the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> yeah, we all know it by heart around here. And then they were like, doesn't that kind of seem like a dictatorship? It does. <laughs> Tips and salary for wait staff at restaurants. Now I know that there's a ton of jobs out there that rely on tips as their primary source of income, but I'm just focusing on the wait staff situation because it's kind of like the poster child for how messed up the tipping system is in our country. Some of you may not be aware about how being a waiter or waitress in our country works, so I'm gonna break it down for you really quick. Across the board, there is the federal minimum wage of $7.25 an hour. Across the board, anywhere that you work in the United States as a waiter or waitress, you're going to make at least $7.25 an hour, which is garbage pay, but it is a guarantee nonetheless. No, he's wrong because wait, waitresses, waiters and stuff, a lot of times they only make like $2 and something and then the rest of it you get on tips. They're not required. If if you get paid tips, they don't have to pay you the minimum wage, which is messed up. But what some people might not realize is that each individual state has the option to set a cash wage and a tip credit. A cash wage is what each individual state promises you as an hourly rate uh, being a tipped employee, but it is not the federal minimum wage. For instance, in Alabama, it's $2.13 an hour. That's what you get paid as a wage, as a, as a waiter in yeah. Alabama. I know what you're thinking. Dave, what about the $5.12 that's left out of that Alabama employee's pocket? Where does that money come from? It comes from their tip credit, which comes directly out of their tips. So, for example, if I was in Alabama waiting tables and I worked for one hour, I would make $2.13. That's what I would make from Alabama as my hourly wage as a waiter. If I had one table and that guy tipped me $5.20, I would only get eight cents. I would only get eight cents because the difference between what I got paid by the state and what the federal government mandates that I receive as an employee is $5.12. So they take that. They take the difference between what they're willing to pay you and what is guaranteed to be pay you to make up the difference. That's ridiculous. Keep in mind that every state is different. Some of them treat their employees yeah. as poor, while others do try and at least kind of compensate for the fact that they're going to have a higher cost of living in, the, in their area. But it, across the board, it pretty much sucks all around. Now I'm going to have all kinds of people in the comments section that say things like, well, if they want to pay a minimum wage and that's what they're owed, then that's a good system to do it. Or you're going to have some waiters that are like, you know what? I make fine money. I, you don't want to complain about this. I make okay money. You deserve both. You deserve both. You deserve your minimum wage because that's what you're owed as a citizen of this country. You deserve the tips because that's what the customers wanted to give you. They saw what you did. Yeah. They were happy with the result and they gave you money. They gave it to you. You deserve both. What makes me mad is that I know why they do it, why they have these stupid systems that have the tiny minimum wage that doesn't meet the federal minimum wage. So they have to compensate for that by taking from your tips that we gave to you personally to make up for it because they don't want you to have that much money. They don't think you deserve it. To them, you're a low-down, low-class, low-dog waiter. 
You don't deserve that money because in their mind, you need to go make money elsewhere. You don't need to have a diversified source of income. That's for Wall Street, not for you. I always say, well, if they stop that, then people would just stop tipping. No, he wouldn't. The people that don't tip, don't tip, and the people that do, do. And it would stay that way. It's a scam. And because they took a beautiful system of people getting rewarded by other people for the hard work they did and made those workers supplement their own income with the rewards that they received and told us that it couldn't be any other way or the system would fail. Yeah, uh, I agree with that, except also I feel like a lot of it's the employers, like the people that own the companies and the restaurants, uh, they just take advantage of the system and that makes it to where they can get cheap labor that, you know, rely on the customers to, to make up the difference. And uh, the people that work there are the ones that get screwed. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Are, and is this the only country that's like that, too? Like, I'm pretty sure this is the only country I've heard of that's like that. Every time I hear about another country, it's not like that. Designer breed dogs. Yeah, I said it. You can hate me for it, but I don't care. What is Designer that? breeds are the biggest scam in this dog industry. Some of y'all might not know okay. what a designer breed is. Designer breed. So let me help you out. A designer breed is when you take one breed and another breed and mix them together, put a fancy damn name on it, and charge so much money for it, it's ridiculous. I'm sorry. I, I'm i not sorry. No, I'm not, I'm not sorry. No. I remember when I was a kid, we used to have this dog. It was like half Shih Tzu, half Poodle. We paid for like, I would say maybe 20 bucks for it. Like 20 bucks for this dang on dog. Okay. Now, they put a name on it called a Shipu. And they charge thousands of dollars for it. It's crazy. Better yet, I had another dog that was half Chihuahua and half Dotson. Now they have these things called Chihuahuas. <laughs> what, the, what the? Are you serious? Look, we had a fancy name for that stuff too. Back yeah, mutt. <laughs> back in my day, they called it back in my day. Like I'm that old. I'm not that old. Anyways, back in the day, they called that a mutt, and it was perfectly fine. We all love mutts. They're just dogs that we love to play with and call them our pets but let me clarify something it's not the designer breeds that i have an issue with it's the people that mix them together and charge thousands of dollars for it to consumers who don't know the difference yeah and they're over here spending 2500 3000 5000 when did a mutt ever cost more and a full-blown registered AKC standard poodle. Good point. Very good point. When, what, what kind of, what, what the, <laughs> I, I, I don't get it. But hey, I'll groom them. You bring them to me, I'll groom them. <laughs> I love them, and that's all that really matters. But man, we gotta stop this whole designer breed thing. It's a mutt. It's okay. We all have mutts. Here, I'm gonna show you my mutt. That one over there is Deja. She's a full-blown pit, and she's fat and weird fuck, weird looking. That's Mac. He's a boxer pit mix. He is almost 11 years old. That's Iggy. She's a full-blown AKC registered <laughs> boxer. And I love all my babies. All my babies. <laughs> cool. Brass. And I'm going to ruffle a lot of feathers with this one. Grass? But fucking grass. It's ridiculous. The amount of work, time, energy, and resources yeah. that we invest in grass. Yeah, it's crazy. I spent like, it was like two hours yesterday mowing the, uh, the yard. And it was literally like the small part of the yard. Like the backyard. The, the front yard's like twice the size. It would probably... Luckily, the neighbor mowed it. He's a big riding mower, but with a push mower, it would have probably took me like probably over three hours to mow the front yard. I'm glad I didn't have to do that. It's crazy. It's like, what do you what do you need a yard for? I don't I don't do anything in the yard. I sometimes go outside and drink my coffee, sit at the table. You know, Anthony plays in the yard, but it's just, it's too much of a yard. It's too much yard. I don't need it. 
we're constantly having to replenish the water because it just sucks it out of the topsoil and <laughs> evaporates it out of the topsoil. It gives us absolutely zero, zero benefit. And <laughs> we take care of it and invest in it. Why? <laughs> it doesn't even look good. It's not comfortable to sit on. And it's fucking expensive. Never mind time consuming when you can have something like mini clover that doesn't flower and requires zero maintenance and actually holds uh, water in the topsoil. Mini clover, that's a good idea. I wonder if I could get like a ton of clovers and just put in my backyard. Working five days a week. The eight hour workday was invented over 100 years ago and despite all of the advances in technology since then, nothing's changed. <laughs> yeah. Second use is birth control. I don't know who started it, but I see more and more of it every day, and we need to stop. And I get it, especially because in a post Roe v. Wade world, we want to put more of the onus on those who can go around and get people pregnant. And it is much safer to say, shoot blanks, than shoot at a bulletproof vest. And because vasectomies are reversible, it seems like it makes total sense. Except they're not supposed to be. The point of a vasectomy is to make <laughs> sure you can't get anyone pregnant ever again. And while there are some cases where you can undo it, that's not the point only have about a 50 50 shot of having it reversed if you wait longer than three years to get it undone and that number decreases every year you go which means if we start making people get vasectomies really really young it nips the odds of them having children in the bud before they even get to that age birth control is a thing and we should be advocating for it but making everyone get a vasectomy isn't quite it plus it does open the door for the whole forced sterilization thing again so let's keep that closed who makes anybody though i i don't know what she's talking about exactly uh maybe i'm lost here i don't know maybe i'm missing something let me know down there and uh yeah because i i genuinely have no clue what she's talking about identity theft everything reporting to your consumer report i can tie to identity theft you don't believe me let's get to it according to 15 usc 1681b permissible purpose of consumer reports this law states in general that unless a consumer reporting agency has your written instructions, they are not to furnish anything to your report. I want you to remember this going forward. Okay. Permissible purpose equals written instructions. With permissible purpose, grants consent. Without permissible purpose is identity theft. According to 15 USC 6802, obligations with respect to disclosures of personal information, a financial institution is supposed to give you three disclosures. The first disclosure is them letting you know they're going to report something to your consumer report. The second disclosure is letting you know that you have the right to not disclose that information to your consumer report. The third disclosure is them letting you know that you have the right to do so. Do you think they follow those rules? No. I don't know what that guy was talking about either. Uh, or what that has to do with the video of like what's clearly a scam, but Americans have been conditioned to believe is normal. I don't even know what he was talking about to know if it was normal or not about like identity theft. I, I think that's like a worldwide kind of issue though. Honestly, I don't think that's like just specific to America. I'll go next. What about returning merchandise to a retailer that you didn't order? It could be something as simple as ordering hair conditioner, but you get beard conditioner. What do you do? The online company is going to want to send you this and charge you for this if you don't send this back. But here's the secret. This is considered a free gift. So what do you do? You have to contact their customer service department and let them know that it is illegal for them to charge you for the product that you didn't order and that you are not legally obligated to send it back. It's not your job to correct their mistakes. And here's the article from the Federal okay. Trade Commission to prove it. Also, I don't think that's specific to uh, America. I believe that's also a worldwide thing. So I, I don't uh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. You let me know down below. I don't think this one was as good as the first, like the other six in this series, actually. Like this one was kind of like falling a little bit short. I don't know. Let me know what you think. And you guys have a super fun, awesome day. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye.